and welcome to this online service from Christchurch in Southport. It is so great to have you with us today um, as we gather in person and online to worship and learn together. My name's Beck. I'm the curate here uh, and we're so glad that you've been able to join us. In just a moment we're going to go over and hear from Steve who is finishing up today speaking to us about vision and values of the church uh, and how we can grow in our giving and surrendering all of what we have and all of who we are to Jesus. Let's prepare ourselves before we go over to hear our reading by praying. Lord Jesus, as we give you this time this morning, we pray that you would open our hearts and our minds to hear your word, that you would speak to us, Lord, and help us to grow more and more into the people that you have called us to be. We ask in your precious name. Amen. Let's go over then and hear our reading and then let's hear from Steve. So our Bible reading this morning is Proverbs chapter 3 and it's verses 5 to 18, starting with one of my most favourite verses. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Honour the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline and do not resent his rebuke because the Lord disciplines those he loves as a father the son he delights in. Blessed are those who who find wisdom, those who gain understanding, for she is more profitable than silver and yields better return than gold. She is more precious than rubies, nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand, in her left hand are riches and honour. Her ways are pleasant ways and all are her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her, those who hold her fast will be blessed. Good morning, everyone. It is so good to see you all today. Should we just pray for a moment? Lord, we thank you for, for the scriptures. We thank you, Lord, for the way in which they speak into our lives. Help us, Lord, to hear your word to us today. Help us to be open to the work of your spirit this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, we're thinking today about three things. We're thinking about trust and discipline and wisdom. Because those three things were in that passage. And the uh, book of Proverbs is a great book because... It, it's effectively God trying to help us to see how life works. And we all want to see how life works, don't we? We all want to try and make the most of life. And uh, we, most of us think that we can sort it all out, but uh, very few of us actually can. And the book of Proverbs is filled with sometimes little one-liners that help you understand how life works, or a bit like this passage, whole chunks, whole sections that kind of all fit together to help you try and understand life. Because it sometimes feels like uh, we always want to try and make con uh, get control of life, don't we? And it's not always possible. And we all want to understand life, but don't always seem to get there. A lot of people just simply try and get up in the morning, survive the day, hope for the best, go to bed, next day, do the same thing. But God has so much more for us than that. 
He wants us to, to thrive and to flourish and to grow. He wants us to experience all that life can give. Because when Jesus came, he came that we might have life and life in all its fullness. That was his promise. Fullness of life. And Proverbs is pretty much the, the same kind of thing, but just going at it, you know, like one little thing after another. This is how you can experience the fullness of life. And so I want to pick up on those three themes in that passage, just very briefly, and then pick up on a fourth theme separately. Let's think about the first one. Trust in the Lord. Verse 5 is a famous verse. Trust in the Lord and lean not on your own understanding. I don't know about you, but the older I get, the more I understand that I don't understand life. When I was, when I was 20 or whatever, I thought I had it all sussed. Uh, the older I get, the more I understand. I just don't understand it. But we've all experienced, haven't we, curveballs thrown by life at us. The pandemic is one of them. Who expected that? Trust in the Lord. See, there are two ways in which you can live life. You can either trust in yourself or you can trust in God. And most of us, at some point, have all trusted in ourselves. And perhaps still do. We've all heard, haven't we? The, uh, <laughs> I mean, certainly at one point, every wedding reception, at the disco at the end, the, the final song would always be... Slowly. Slowly, no, 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 not quite. I did it my way. Oh. Frank Sinatra, big Frank, belt and out, I did it my way. And everyone would be there with their arms over their shoulders, kicking their legs up, all singing, I did it my way, all that kind of stuff. And that's how people live. They're doing it their way. And then they wonder why life seems to be out of control. God calls us to trust in him. To trust in him who is the author of life. The one who created life, who created this world, who created all the things that we see around us. And who helps us to understand not from our perspective, but from his perspective. We are, called to, we are called to trust him with every detail of our lives and to not rely on our own strength or our own understanding because that is the way to failure. The second thing that we see in this reading that's written by King Solomon he says, do not despise the Lord's discipline. This is something that none of us like to talk about, but God does discipline us. When we stray away from what he calls us to be, he does discipline. Why does he discipline? It's not because he hates us, it's because he loves us. Every parent who loves their child disciplines their child. They want that child to grow up to be a disciplined person. To live, to live their life in such a way that they are doing what needs to be done in order to try and make their life effective and successful. Every child wants that for their kid. And sometimes that means that we have to discipline our children. And we do it because we love them for no other reason than that. We love our kids and so we discipline them. And so it should be no surprise that the God who loves us also disciplines us. That when we move off the path that he's given us, he's there trying to call us back onto the way that we should be on. He's calling us back to live life his way and not our way. And he'll do that through all sorts of ways. And it's his discipline. And it's easy to despise the Lord's discipline because in the end, we all just want to go our own way. We want to trust in ourselves, but he's calling us back to him. He's creating circumstances so that we have to make the decision to come back to him and to do the things that he's called us to do. So don't despise the Lord's discipline. Solomon says here, accept it. Submit to it. And then the final thing that this, uh, Solomon says is that we should seek 
wisdom. The whole of Proverbs is all about seeking wisdom. And uh, in our reading and elsewhere in Proverbs, Proverbs, uh, wisdom is described almost as, as, a, as a woman. It's she. It's given a pronoun, she. It's personified in some way. And this seeking the wisdom, Solomon says in chapter 9, he says, wisdom begins with the fear of the Lord. Wisdom starts and ends with God. Wisdom is not about us acquiring knowledge. It is about us getting to know the God who created life. Wisdom is about seeking God in order to understand life. It's about seeking God in order to understand his ways and to see how he's created this world. We are called to seek wisdom. And for many of you, you'll have people in your life who you will have considered wise and many of them will be people who I mean certainly when I look at my life they were people who just knew God deeply profoundly passionately they were the people who had the most wisdom about life not just about God but about life we're called to seek the wisdom of God and that begins with the fear of of the Lord. And then in the midst of this passage, there's a little strange part of it. Because here's Solomon talking about trust God, submit to his discipline, seek wisdom. And then he says, Honor the Lord with your wealth. And it's like a kind of intersection here he kind of brings something in that seems to be very practical in these kind of big discussion of the big themes of trust and discipline and wisdom he brings in something that's very earthly very kind of grounded and he calls us to honor God with our wealth now let me just clarify here you're thinking wealth well that's not me that's other people uh the Hebrew word for wealth means a bit more than just having lots of money. Uh, the King James Version says, honour God with your substance. That's fantastic, that. Honour God with your substance. In other words, honour God with all that you have. And you may only have a little bit compared to others. Or you may have a huge amount compared to others. That doesn't matter. You honour God with what you have. And you might think, well, I don't have very much. Let me tell you that compared to 95% of the world, you have a huge amount. If you've ever visited any of the kind of developing countries, you will know just how rich you are. Andrew and I met a, a woman in Haiti who lived in a hut near a beach who literally had just the hut, barely a pot to cook in, she had three kids, most of whom were sick. And every couple of years, because she was by the beach, there'd be a storm, her hut would be blown down, and she'd start all over again. Compared to her, you are incredibly wealthy. And here we are called to honour God with all that we have. And to honour means to worship God. You worship God with everything that you have. You worship God with your house and how you use your house. You worship God with the food that you have and how you use that food. You worship God with every single possession that you have. It's about how you use it for him. Now most of you know, if you've been around Christ Church for any amount of time, you will know that every single year there's at least one sermon that I preach on giving. And you may have picked up, this is the sermon. <laughs> because even though this is more than giving, this is about how you use everything you have. How you use what you have includes giving. How you use your substance includes what you give away. And that might include how you share your house with others who are in need, how you use your food for those who are in need. 
but it's also about how you use your finance. And one of the ways in which we honour God is to do what he has called us to do and to give some of that away. Of course, absolutely, we all work to provide for ourselves. We all need to eat. We all need a house over our, our heads and all that kind of stuff. But also, we are called to work for the glory of God, to use what we have and to give it away. And we're very fortunate here at Christchurch because, I mean, we've been thinking about our history recently, haven't we? But there have been, at the very least, decades and perhaps even 200 years of consistent biblical teaching about how we use money. And we reap the benefits of that. I know that you are an incredibly generous group of people. And we thank every single person who gives to the church. Whether you think that's a small amount or a large amount, doesn't matter. We thank you profusely from the bottom of our hearts for everything that you give to Christ Church. And we are building today on consistent, faithful, biblical teaching about how we use money. Let me remind you of the things that we say. We remind you every single year that everything that you have belongs to God. You may think that you've earned it. You may have think that you work for it. But the moment you said Jesus is Lord, you are saying everything I have now belongs to you, Jesus. That is the deal. When you say that Jesus is Lord, you are saying everything you have belongs to him. Your whole life, your whole future, your past and your present, every single penny, if you've got any pennies in the bank, belong to him. That's the starting point. It's all his. And in the New Testament, we are called to be generous with what we have. Not, not because it's ours, but because it is his. What does generosity look like? Because that's a relative thing, isn't it? Well, let's compare it to the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, there was a law. And the law was, you gave 10% of all your income to, to God. You gave it to the temple. 10%. And on top of that, a couple of times a year, you would give a thank offering just to say thank you to God for his faithfulness to you. So that's the starting point. Generosity builds on that. And that sounds like a scary amount of money. But I'll get onto that in a moment. We're called to be generous. And we're called to be regular and consistent in our giving. And so we encourage people to give either weekly or monthly. And I would encourage you to think about it. Because it is a way of honouring God. That you use what he has given you to worship him. But let's get back to those three things that we're talking about. Trust. Discipline, wisdom. See, if Solomon puts this in the middle of those three things where he says, honour God with your wealth, then surely in some way it relates to them. Well, if you want to grow in trust and discipline and wisdom, then I would encourage you to think about how you use your substance, how you use all that you have. So let's think about trust. The way you handle your finances develops your trust in God. I said before, giving away 10% of your income sounds like a huge amount. And for a lot of people, it puts them off. But let me tell you that Andrew and I have done this for 32 years. The moment we got married, we said, we are giving away 10% of our income. And sometimes we give more than that. So we've always done it. And I can tell you now that God has never, ever let us down. In those times where we felt that actually this really is hard to do this month, or even this year, because we've had some years that were really ropey, we've stuck at it. And in that, God has shown his faithfulness and provided for us in extraordinary ways. See, when you actually start to do what God calls us to do, he will show himself faithful and you learn to trust him. 
You learn to trust that he will always have your back. You learn to trust that when he says he will do something, that he will do it. It's when you step out in faith, that's where you learn to trust. And maybe moving to 10% is a bit of a step for you. I just encourage people, don't, just start moving towards 10%. Just move towards it in some way. It doesn't have to be done in one big step. Just try it and see what God will do. As we do what God calls us to do, we learn we can trust him. But let's think also about discipline. God disciplines us. There are two ways in which you can discipline a child. Some of us have experienced one more than the other. The first one is when they do something wrong, you get a clip around the ear. You're not allowed to do that anymore, are you? Andrew's going, oh, yeah. So we've experienced that. Yeah, we do things wrong and we face the consequences of it. Another way of experiencing discipline is to have the things that we do right affirmed for us, rewarded in some way. And so lots of schools, they do the whole kind of, you know, the gold stars thing and all that kind of stuff as a way of reaffirming good behaviour. And God does that too. That when we start to do the things that he says we should do, that the things he's promised come our way. And so when it comes to giving... We learn that when, I mean, it says in Scripture a number of times, that when you give as he's called us to give, that you reap the benefits of that. We had it in our reading. Uh, Let me just read it to you. Uh, Honour the Lord with your wealth, the first fruits of all your crops, then your barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vats will brim over with new wine. And then in Malachi, it says this, Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. God affirms your good behaviour by pouring out blessing upon you. That's his discipline. There are always consequences to every action and decision that we make. And when we start to make the right decisions, we start to reap the benefits and the blessing of God. When I reflect on how Andrew and I have uh, lived our lives, for most of our married life, uh, we've n- never had a lot of money. We've had, uh, we certainly have now because we got rid of our two kids who've just sucked the life out of us. <laughs> it's fine now. But before that, especially in times when either Andrew wasn't working or uh, we were just struggling in different ways, when I reflect on my life and how God has blessed us, I can tell you that I have just lived the best life. I've seen God provide for us. I've seen God do stuff in all sorts of ways. I've felt the blessing of God in my life. And I'm not trying to big up something that wasn't there. I've just enjoyed every moment of what God has given me. And part of that is trying to be faithful in our finances. It's not the whole story because we have to be faithful in every other part of our lives, don't we? But part of it is being faithful in our finances. And as we look to our future and trying to work out what happens kind of in retirement we're having to trust God again and trust that God will provide and that we will still have the best life because that's who God is that's the God who disciplines us that's the God who shapes our life so that we are following him and receiving Life in all its fullness now. And then the third thing is wisdom. 
as you start to put into place the things that God says, as you start to, to use your money and your wealth and your substance in the way that God says, as you start to live life in the way that God says, then you discover that actually you don't understand a flippant thing. God knows it. You start to understand that actually there is wisdom in all of this. That as you look to, I mean, the scripture says so much about how we handle finance. And all of it is good stuff. I would encourage you to, to get hold of a book that helps you understand the biblical view of handling your money. And you'll discover that there's real wisdom in it. Why? Because God is the author of life. And he knows how life works. And he knows how the consequences of our decisions impact our lives. He knows how to bring the best out of all of that. So I would encourage you, seek to live out your life like God calls you to live it. And discover his wisdom. The more that you get to know God, the more you discover just how much he says is just true. There are other options, of course. You can go and get a self-help book from Waterstones. You can ask your mate down the pub what to do. Or you can go to the author of life. And ask him about every single decision that you need to make. And he will guide you. And he will show you his wisdom. And as you live out that wisdom, you'll discover life in all its fullness.
Lord Jesus, as we give ourselves to you, would you help us to grow, to more and more surrender all that we have and all that we are to you. I pray that you would give us new sense of freedom in this area and that as we start to think about mission over these next few weeks that that you would help us to see how each and every one of us has a role to play in resourcing and in exercising mission and ministry in the places that you call us to. Holy Spirit, would you come and just inspire us now as to what, what it is that we can do, what it is that we can give. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. For joining us today and uh, there's so many opportunities for you to get involved do look out for missional communities look out for um, opportunities to get involved with alpha if you want to find out more you can go to our website sign up for our weekly newsletter where you'll get all the most up-to-date information about what's going on at Christchurch we will see you next time bye